Hi guys, Dr. Gillard again. We're going to teach you to auscultate the apex monkey uh, zones, or of course they're not called the apex monkey zones, they're called the what? Cardiac regions of the chest. Uh, so thank my grandson Chris here for volunteering his body for us. You guys owe him big time. And here we go. So in the last video we talked about finding the apical impulse. So go watch that one because I'm not going to go through that again very much. Uh, stethoscope here, we're for, you can use, uh, we'll be using the diaphragm, it's what most people use, right, diaphragm, make sure it's working, uh, I'm going to of course leave this out so I can, so I can talk to you, I'm just going to kind of drag it along, alright, so to, to auscultate the cardiac regions, the cardiac zones, uh, which is what, what type of a pattern, it's in a Z pattern, right, it's like, whoosh, like Zorro. Okay, so what is the mnemonic? A pet monkey. What does that stand for? Aortic for the aortic valve. Pulmonic for the pulmonic valve. Herb's point, third, which is the third intercostal space, left sternal border. Uh, it's a nice vantage point. You can hear murmurs and you can hear both uh, the aortic and pulmonic valve quite nicely from there. You can hear the rate and rhythm of the heart good. I like that third intercostal space. Fifth intercostal space, left sternal border, is the tricuspid uh, area where you hear the tricuspid valve. And the fifth intercostal space at the mid clavicular line is the mitral valve. Okay, let's see how we do it. So let's do it for real first, how I recommend uh, you do it. Then I'll show you for boards and how I want you to do it. So. All I want you to do, now you're expert palpator, so now we're not going to be palpating anymore. You can tell just by getting set up where these areas are. So I'm going to find the jugular notch. Go down how far? About two inches, right? Peace sign. I hope that's not one of those gang signs nowadays, but we used to call it a peace sign, but I can't get it in the frame. Uh, so I am not affiliated with any gang, if anyone's wondering. All right, anyway, so uh, jugular notch, two centimeter or two inches down. Now let's wiggle our way out. Remember, this is the hunter here. We're finding that rib. Okay, there's that big second rib. So intercostal space is here. So here we go. We're going to put down, what is that? What am I putting? Is that the bell or the diaphragm? That's the diaphragm. Notice the location. Now, notice the clavicle is right here. So if I see your bell way up here next to the clavicle, you're going to get big points off because you're over the first rib. So no good. Two inches, second rib, second intercostal space is right here. Okay. So we're going to, in reality, we use an inching technique. We're going to inch our way through that Z pattern. So it's uh, 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Listen to about a full breath or so. And then you're going to move about a half a diameter of the bell. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Lift it up a little bit and move. Ideally, you could slide it along, but a lot of people, when it gets a little warm, they get sticky. So lift it up a little bit and move. See, I'm going about a half a diaphragm of the bell. Okay, now we're working our way over to what spot? i got to go a little farther. I'm still on the sternum. Okay, now I'm on the pulmonic cardiac region where, what, what do we hear there? The pulmonic valve. Now, now we're going to go down, so that's the top of the Z, so let's inch our way down. Inching, inching, now I'm in, you can almost feel it with your stethoscope, you can almost palpate these ribs, but that's the third intercostal space, Herb's point. Inching, inching, there's the fourth, inching. There's the fifth. Now I'm speeding up because you should 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. You should take your time and listen to the heart. What are you listening for? The rate of the heart, the rhythm of the heart, the amplitude. Listening for the S1 heart sound. First, with the rhythm, you're listening to the S1 and R, uh, S2 together. Lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. And then you're listening just to the lub. Just the S, lub, lub. Then you're focusing your mind on the dub, the S2, dub, dub, 
dub and you're listening for any splitting, uh, any gushing, any regurgitation murmurs, things like that. Okay, we're at the bottom, we're at the fifth intercostal space and now we're going to be inching our way out. Inching, inching, inching. And there we are, fifth intercostal space, mid-sternal line. And what's that? That's the apex of the heart, which is usually the PMI. What's PMI? Point of maximum impulse, which is usually the same as the apical impulse. Is it always? No. Let's say right ventricular hypertrophy, the PMI might be different. It might be over here at the left sternal border down at fifth intercostal space, or it might be down here at the xiphoid. But usually the PMI and the apical impulse are one and the same. Okay, so that's how you should really do it in your office. Now for boards, examiners are uh, under stress. They have a lot of students to get through, so this is what, what I recommend for that. Um, so same setup. Make sure the examiner shows you know what the heck you're doing. Find the jugular notch. Find the sternal angle. If I see a student do that, in my mind I'm going, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. He's palpating the landmarks. Then I see you go out and find that second rib. Okay, excellent. This guy knows what he's doing. And then, it, then I know as well where the, where the uh, intercostal space, second intercostal space, right sternal border is. Uh, so that helps me as well. And that is the end of your palpate. You don't palpate anymore because you guys are, by fifth quarter, you're pros at this now. So we're setting up over what? The aortic cardiac area for the aortic valve. We're listening. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Now, instead of inching our way along, and this is how I was taught, and some people still do this. They don't have time to inch their way along the Z pattern. Now you're going to jump right to the pulmonic area. Okay, so now you've got to use your mind and think where the heck that is. So it's going to be exactly the same as this spot, only on the other side of the sternum, the left sternum border. So now we're going to listen right here. Okay, now these the diaphragms are big enough. You've, if you're on top of a rib a little bit, it's not going to matter because the diaphragm is so big, it's still going to cover the intercostal space. So we went from aortic, pulmonic area. Now we're going to go down just one intercostal space. There's Herb's point, uh, which is a good vantage point to listen to the whole heart. Plus, it, uh, you can hear the aortic and pulmonic valves quite nicely. Okay, now we're going to go down, in our mind's eye, we're going to go down to the fifth intercostal space. So it's not right here, that's the fourth. So we have to make a little bit bigger jump. There's the fifth intercostal space, left sternal border. Okay, what's there? That's the mitral valve. Is that correct? Well, let's see. A, P, E, T. No, it's the tricuspid valve. Okay, so you got to memorize that. All pigs eat too much. That's another good mnemonic. So a tricuspid valve here we're listening for. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Now the big jump. Okay, we're going to stay in the fifth intercostal space, midclavicular line. So here we go. I I know it's going to be in most people, right inside the nipple, a little below the nipple. So it's going to be right here. Okay, and then we listen. Uh, and now where are we? Now that's the mitral valve. A pet monkey, or all pigs eat too much. The M for much. Okay. Now, uh, I might ask you, how do you, if you want to hear the left, uh, the apical area better, what maneuver do you use? What maneuver? Put the patient in the left lateral decubitus position. I'm, I'm not going to pan out to show you that. You know that. You roll the patient over uh, 45 degrees, not 90 degrees, uh, on the right and the left side, and then you listen. Uh, if I want you to, uh, if you want to accentuate the aortic or pulmonic valve, what do you do? You sit the patient up, have them bend forward, take a breath, blow the air out, by, and kind of lean forward, put their head down. That, that brings the base of the heart closer to the, to the chest wall, and you can, hear, uh, you can hear those regions much better that way. So those are the two positions that you need to know. And I think that about covers it. So good luck on your examination. Thanks again, Chris. You're awesome. And we'll see you guys in the next video.